Hello and welcome everyone to electionspeakers.com, the place for unique critique of the important speakers of this 2012 presidential campaign. My name is Dr. Dennis Becker, and I'll be your host for these special podcasts, which are designed to give voters valuable information needed to make a confident decision on November 6th. We'll be watching and listening to the candidates and others who are trying to win your vote. Their talking techniques and tactics are our exclusive topic for this unique critique. And joining me today, as she has every day for the last four years, is Lori Schlaff, the Director of Executive Education and Senior Coaching Partner at the Speech Improvement Company. Welcome, Lori. Great to be here. In addition to Lori and I on the program today, our storytelling coach and senior speech coach at Speech Improvement Company, Robin Maxfield. Hello, everyone. Now, tonight we're going to be talking about the primary speakers that we heard tonight in the Republican National Convention, Condoleezza Rice and Paul Ryan. Now, before we get to all of that, I'm going to ask Lori to talk to a little bit about how we're scoring these uh, speakers. Lori. Sure, Dennis. Well, we wanted to be as objective as possible, so we developed an electionspeakers.com scorecard. It has 10 dimensions where are very, very important in judging whether or not a speaker is effective. Now, there's 10 dimensions, and the highest score you can get on each dimension is a 10. So the highest score any speaker can get is 100. We're scoring things like gestures, use of appropriate language, their speed, their eye contact. We'll talk more about it some other time, but just keep in mind the highest score a a speaker can get is 100, and 80 is considered a very good score because, as we know, no one's perfect. So, Lori, let's start with you. How did Condoleezza Rice do tonight, do you think, as a speaker? What, what, what are your comments about her? I think Condoleezza Rice is a very, very fine speaker. Now, she is a certain genre. What's that genre? I'll call it the two eyes. She's intense, and she's very intelligent. Now, both of those sound like very good qualities, but they also have their downsides. So someone who's too intense may come across as too serious. Someone who, is it possible to be too intelligent? Yes. So for example, you might have a great breadth of knowledge, but what if you say too many things? And Dennis, I think you're going to talk a little bit about her, her, uh, uh, the amount of things that she tried to get across. The other issue with sounding intelligent is that you're very dense. So you say a lot, yes, and you say a lot in a short period of time. So people may not be able to absorb what you say. She's very, very improved as a speaker from what I remember when she first came on the national scene. Robin, any last words on Condoleezza Rice? Then we're going to talk about Susanna Martinez. Well, I think that uh, what comes across to me in all this Republican speakers is that they seem to put more attention on bringing people into the party than they do focusing on spotlighting Mitt as the choice. Yeah, there's a whole issue of the, you know, it used to be called a platform, that a a candidate would run on a platform. And the conferences, the conventions were used to lay out the planks in the platform. Well, we didn't get much of that tonight. But at any rate, let's talk about Susana Martinez, the New Mexican governor. And uh, Lori, a couple of quick comments about her. We're going to talk about Paul Ryan. Go Mm -hmm, ahead. mm Mm-hmm. Well, uh, actually, um, in a moment, I'm going to totally defer to to Robin because uh, Robin, who is our master storyteller here at the company, picked up how good she was at storytelling. And actually, Robin, why don't you start with that? Because then I want to come back to the the nonverbal part of communication that went along with the storytelling. Okay, sounds good, Lori. Well, there was a point in her talk, in her speech, where she told a story. And it was very well told. One of the ways it was so well told was she was actually in the moment telling the story as if it were happening. And that was when she switched to the Republican Party and she talked about having lunch, very casual, connected with the audience, and it's something we've all done. We've gone to lunch with someone. But it ended in a powerful statement, which was a quote. She said, I'll be damned, we're Republicans. So uh, it was not lost on how how effective it was and how strategic it was. And it was an excellent use of storytelling. Right. And trust me, everyone, that's a real compliment Mm -hmm. from Robin Maxfield. So occasionally I may not be able to pay attention when I'm watching the convention because I'm focusing on whatever, tweeting or this or that. So I was focusing more on Susanna's uh, nonverbal behavior. 
And it's very interesting because when Robin said she was a great speaker, I said, gee, that's interesting because she was very sort of placid. She didn't have a lot of facial expression. Uh, she didn't move very much. She had what, what some people describe as poise. She was very in control of herself, but not in a way you might think of as associated with the storyteller. So I got to thinking that maybe as a female governor, she has learned to sort of contain herself and not look too sort of, shall we say, wild and crazy, mm -hmm. even though her content, as you're saying, was quite outstanding. Yes. I thought she did a great job overall. All right, let's talk about Paul Ryan, vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan. Now, here's a guy, quick synopsis from my perspective. Started off very measured, kind of slow. Nervous. Nervous. Yes, you could see the nervousness, drinking water, smacking his lips, which he did, by the way, 37 times. This you count terrible. everything. You can believe it. Coaches have these terrible habits of kick counting these stupid little things. But there it is. But he started off very measured, and uh, there were a lot of pauses between thoughts, and he did a lot of what we call talking in phrases, which means he says two or three words and then stops. Two or three words and then stops. Talking in phrases, which is different than putting the whole sentence together and making that happen. So uh, anyway, let me pass this on to Robin first. Go ahead. Well, we like to say here at Speech Improvement Company that everything communicates. And the first thing that Lori and I were most struck with was his hairstyle. It looked a bit like a skateboarder, but I will say, <laughs> I will say that he, I scored him very high. So uh, did I. He really did cover, I, I gave him a 92%. Wow, that is yeah. extremely high out of 100. He, I thought he was very effective mm -hmm. with uh, using the audience, enrolling them in everything that he was saying and getting their involvement and whooping them up into quite a frenzy, actually. Right. Now, yesterday people criticized some of my commentary about Ann Romney saying that I was too hard on her. And I said, I... I really judge it against what are great standards, even though she was a beginner. And I'd have to say that Ryan is a beginner on the national scene, yet he shows the makings of a fabulous communicator. As Robin was inferring, I think the main issue that might be held against him is that he possibly appears from a nonverbal visual point of view, and he can't help it, and there's nothing wrong with it, as perhaps too young in the minds of some Americans to appear presidential. Let me just quickly give a litany of why I also gave him a high score, which was not as high as Robbins, but 81 out of 100, which is excellent. As I said, 80 is excellent. The whole idea of appearing relaxed, very, very important. A variety of facial expression. There's also, a, 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 you notice something about the sound of ST, which, is, which should be st, st. It comes out as though it's S-H. It's like, shh, shh. You'll notice it when you listen to him speak closely. It's not a big deal, but I mean, it's one of the things, if you, if you notice something that he sounds strange, that may be what you're noticing. But I'll tell you one thing I really liked about it. What? Two, no, two things, really. One, when he used the, when he, he knew where that camera was. He knew when to use it. And certain sentences were right smack into that camera. You are entitled to, boom, right into that camera. Not talking to the 20,000 people in the room, talking to the 20 million who are watching, hopefully. Probably more like four or five million. But nonetheless, he knew right where that camera was. And that's Good impressive. Speaking. That was very, very impressive. impressive. Again, being new on the national and it, scene. It came along near the end of the speech. He got much more relaxed as he went along. And that closing was dynamite. It was dynamite. He had his volume went up, his inflection went up, the speed went up. At the very end, everything's going back. And, da, 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 da. and they were on their feet cheering, and he went right with it. That was a very nice technique to close on. So, speaking of closing, anything else about Paul Ryan? Nope, I'd said it all. I'd say that he got high scores from us, and maybe a piece of it is that, and I think this is true for everyone who was watching, he exceeded expectations. He had been portrayed in the media as sort of geeky, a numbers wonk, and he actually w was emotional and interesting as a speaker. He still has to work on, remember that old term that came out in the... What? In the, the 08 election about gravitas? Yes, and it again... It was before 08. It might have been with Gore, maybe, even way yeah. back in 04, perhaps. With gravitas. What was that? Somebody made up that right. word. Right, some since sort of sticking. seriousness that yes. may, have, may have something to do with age. We'll have to think more yeah, about that. Yeah, it may well have to do with that, but I think that's something that they're going to be battling. But nonetheless, 
He did a good job tonight, and I want to I want to say thanks to both Robin Maxfield and Laurie Schlaff for doing a good job with me in the program tonight. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all we have time for on this edition of electionspeakers.com. We'll be back with more of the most unique critique of the most important speakers in this 2012 presidential campaign. We'll be back tomorrow, in fact, finishing up the third day of the Republican National Convention. And until that time, I want to thank both of our guests, Laurie Schlaff and Robin Maxfield. And until we talk to you again, I'm Dennis Becker saying thanks for listening and bye Bye for for now. now.